now cold sores many people know about them the tiny fluid filled fever blisters that develop on or around the lips if you're lucky enough to never have had them these blister like lesions can not only appear on your lips but on your chin cheeks inside your nostrils and less frequently on the roof of the mouth but what causes cold sores? Experts say the most common cause is the herpes simplex type 1 virus or HSV1. And sometimes the herpes simplex type, 1, type 2 virus, however, or H HSV2, according to Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, 50 to 80% of adults in the United States have cold sores or oral herpes. Oral herpes is most commonly transmitted by kissing or sharing drinks or utensils. Health experts say other top infectious viruses that can easily be spread through kissing include mononucleosis, the common cold, and flu. Now, for more on the subject, we are joined in our New York studios by Georgia Pacetis. She's a pharmacist and nutraceuticals meets pharmaceuticals integration expert. Ms. Pacetis, welcome to the program. Tell us about uh, the cold sore and how common it is. It seems to be very common, actually. It is actually. According to the World Health Organization, two-thirds of our population globally has HSV-1 or has been exposed to it. Now, it doesn't mean that everybody in their lifetime will get an outbreak, but it is very common. So how can one prevent it? So when you, you typically see a fever blister or a cold sore, which is caused by the virus, it looks um, like a little cluster of little blisters. It's usually around the nose, the mouth. Some people also get it inside the mouth, but it's typically somewhere in the orbital area um, around the mouth or the nose. And what are the treatment options? So I'm actually a cold sore sufferer myself, and I use two different products. I use Abio, which is a cold sore treatment gel, and you can use that up to three to four times a day when you get the actual fever blister or the cold sore. And you can use something like lysine. Lysine you can take all year round to actually help reduce the amount of outbreaks that you get, and that's just an amino acid. And it's also very important to boost your immune system, taking things like vitamin C, vitamin D, and making sure that you're really keeping a very healthy diet it can help the outbreaks um, throughout the year. Are there some alternative ways, uh, perhaps natural uh, products that you could recommend? Yes, I think vitamins. Vitamins are a great resource that you can get over the counter um, that are natural options. There are organic options, preservative free options, um, and those really work on boosting the immune system, those natural options. Like I said before, something like a vitamin C or a vitamin D, you can get these in multivitamin um, capsules as well if you don't want to take multiple pills. But there are over the counter vitamins that you can take that really focus on boosting your immune system so that way you don't get as many outbreaks. What is mononucleosis? I have to say when I heard about this, I was really uh, surprised. Yes, so mono is what we used to think of as the kissing disease. Um, you know, high schoolers and middle schoolers would get it, but actually mono, anybody can get it, um, and it's very common this time of the year, and it really presents itself like a cold. Um, it's caused by a virus called the Epstein-Barr virus, and you can get this by somebody coughing or sneezing near you that has it, or even by kissing them. And how do you prevent them? Typically, your symptoms um, are very similar to something like the flu or the cold, where you might get um, body aches, you're very fatigued, um, you might be coughing and sneezing, but typically you might just have a fever and you're getting body aches and you most likely um, will have something like mono or the flu. But if you are feeling any additional symptoms, like you're, you're having pain in your abdominal uh, you know, area, it could be something like an enlarged spleen, which is a complication of mono. So that's something that you should definitely go see a physician for. So very quickly, how can one avoid viruses that are transmitted through kissing, besides avoiding kissing? <laughs> Other than avoiding kissing, um, you can do things like making sure you have good hand washing techniques. So washing your hands thoroughly, singing something like the happy birthday song when you wash your hands is very helpful. Um, not just doing a quick hand wash, a good 30 to 60 seconds washing your hands is very effective. It helps rid your hands of the viruses, which is how we spread a lot of them. And also making sure that you're using um, proper you know, sneezing and coughing technique, making sure that you're not sneezing and coughing okay. out into the public. Okay, Georgia Pesedes, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And that was uh, Georgia Pesetis speaking to us from New York.